If I fell into a black hole, what would you see? As I approached this extreme gravitational distortion, every aspect of my image would stretch and distort. As I got ever closer, I would seem to slow down until I crossed the point of no return, the event horizon. And then... A curious fate, to be sure. Because my body's reflected light could not make it back to your eye after I crossed this point of no return, the last image you would see of yours truly would be a frozen, faded portrait in space-time. Light does some really weird things around black holes. So weird, in fact, we don't need to complicate the matter with a whole other science video. <gasps> but where's the fun in that? What would a black hole look like in a mirror? Now entering the facility. No astronomical object seems to excite or interest us more than the black hole, and that's understandable. These objects are just so dang extreme. They can have masses billions of times more than large stars. They can have surface gravities faster than the speed of light, even though they don't really have surfaces. And at their centers, physics breaks down so much it makes you want to slap Isaac Newton in his little, in his little Newton face. But at least, though they be extreme, black holes are understandable. We can study what weird things they do to light. We can observe them slumbering at the center of galaxies, and we can use equations to predict how black holes will behave. Heck, how do you think I'm able to harness petawatts of power out of the 600,000 metric ton black hole in there? <laughs> oh, you can't see it because it's only like an atometer wide. My point is, we can science what we see. We shall begin with the basic concept that light behaves weird around black holes because photons of light follow the curvature of space-time. And there is no space-time more curved than at the depths of a black hole's maw. So let's say we start easy and we have a black hole. This would be 400 times more massive than the entire Earth, by the way. Say we have a black hole of this size and something emitting light or reflecting light behind it. When that light travels close to this space-time warping, that light's path will be bent. If it meets your eye, you will see it, but because our brains have been evolutionarily primed to assume that all rays of light are traveling in straight, not bent lines, what we will end up perceiving is a heavily distorted image. This is an extreme example of what's called gravitational lensing. Pretty cool, right? In understanding gravitational lensing, scientists have made some incredible simulations to illuminate exactly what black holes might look like when we see this weird light. This simulation is from the Center of Astrophysics at Harvard, studying where exactly photons of light go when they are flung around the deepest of gravity wells. And if you were the photon, that, I mean, that kind of looks kind of fun, right? I mean, look at the video. Sorry, I'll, I'll get back to it. But what are we actually looking at when we see these distortions around a black hole? Well, this diagram from NASA will be exceedingly helpful in this regard. Now, keep in mind, when we're looking at this, if there was no weirdness going on, we would just see a flat, hot disk falling down into the black hole oblivion. But obviously there's quite a bit of weirdness going on, so let's take it step by step. First, the top part of the black hole, what you're actually seeing is the back part of the disk, the top of it, bent forward towards you. And on the bottom of this black hole, you see the underside of the back of the disk, which you shouldn't be able to see, bent up towards your eye. At the center here, you also see what's called the photon ring, this thin line that is where photons of light can be trapped in multiple orbits around the black hole, light itself producing possibly infinite images of the rest of the black hole. This is what a black hole with stuff around it would really look like. And you may not realize it, but you may have already seen the best popular representation of this more accurate looking black hole. Because of giant Hollywood budgets that individual scientists just never get, the best, most accurate image you've likely ever seen of a black hole is in the film Interstellar. <laughs> all right, all right, oh, yes it is. Yes, it is. To create the spinning giant black hole known as Gargantua, the movie used equations from theoretical physicist and recent Nobel Prize winner Kip Thorne. Now, using his equations and giant Hollywood budgets and great VFX technology, the movie Interstellar was able to render a black hole with an accretion disk so close to reality that Kip Thorne and his colleagues after the movie were able to publish a scientific paper on it. 
Just think about VFX in a sci-fi film so good you could write a dissertation. That is incredible and I think that's the first time it's ever happened. Accretion discs made with math pushed out to the masses. Oh. <laughs> yes it was. Yes it was. Lincoln cars. Like TARS. And so finally we have come back to today's question. What would a black hole look like in a mirror? Now while I don't have that sweet, sweet Christopher Nolan always hire the same actors in every film and why Joseph Gordon-Levitt's face all the time money, but what I do have are PhD friends who are math ninjas and a whole lot of available processing power here at the facility. Aria, could you ask JB to start working on the renders, renders for- Renders complete. Oh. I guess it's what you get when you have a gas giant's worth of computronium. Let's check it out. The animations that you're about to see are the brain babies of a one Matt Henderson, a PhD from Cambridge who used to work at Google and now focuses on artificial intelligence. Matt makes some of the very best science and math animations on the entire internet. So if you like what you're about to see, go follow him on Twitter. I do, and it's always fascinating. In fact, the animations are so fascinating that you're about to see that in a rare move, I'm just gonna Shut up for a second and let you watch them. That is rare. <laughs> Try to keep in mind all the science and everything that we've talked about so far today as your brain is bent just a little bit. Enjoy. What do you mean illegal? Oh, so suddenly they get interested when I'm producing more power than the entire United States combined, but when I want to introduce dark matter coffee into the population centers. Oh, hello. Matt didn't tell me how long the videos <laughs> were going to be. Black holes are endlessly fascinating, as we've seen. So powerful, so mysterious, only partially understood. Though I hope today's program could help you understand them just a little bit more by considering them in some fun and fascinating situations. Until next time, I gotta take this. No, 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 full autonomy is non-negotiable. No, I don't care what they upload. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, I especially want to recognize research assistant and good friend, Gray Bright, who sounds just like that, dead set mate. You can send it to him. And <laughs> visiting scholar, Drew Avison. If you want to join the facility staff, if you want to be a professor, a scholar, a researcher, an assistant, you can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill right now and join over 1,200 nerds who are every day are joining me in Discord, talking to me. We're doing our professor-only office hours once a month. You get episodes a day early, you give me episode ideas, and you can make a bunch of emojis in my face. And if you join the facility and support just enough, you get your name on Aria here each week. And as you can see by how long I've been talking, there's so many of you. So I don't know what to... We like to consider falling into a black hole and the popular term of spaghettification where tidal forces rip you apart atom by atom and you stretch out into a thin people tube. But the reality is, for a lot of black holes, the hawking radiation coming from them as they evaporate would fry you into kind of like a plasma ash. So you wouldn't really get the whole, you know, being really handsome actor and throwing your very satisfyingly square robot into a black hole singularity and then sending equations back to my cocaine. It's just, oh, okay, still going, sorry. Science videos today for a nerdier tomorrow, Mr. Wayne. Thanks for watching, Mr. Wayne.